All right, excellent. Well, I, I see one minute past three on my clock here, so I'm going to call it and uh, kick things off. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the, the very first Chat Talent webinar of, of the year. So firstly, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whichever works best for you. As ever, I'm sure we've got people from across the globe attending this, which is awesome. Um, I'm Alan, Alan Walker. You all know me by now, probably. I'm your host for today. And a big welcome to our first speaker of 2018, Ian Hamilton, who's the CEO of Recruitment Bot. So Ian's going to talk to us today about how acting like a marketeer, more importantly, a great marketeer, can help you to attract a continual flow of qualified, job-ready candidates. We'll be getting through a, quite a lot of, in a short space of time, but we'll hopefully have room for your questions at the end as well. Um, if you have any questions, the best way to ask those is through the Q&A button, which either sits at the top of your screen or the bottom of your screen, depending on how you've got your setup, your end. Um, pop the questions in there. If you put them into chat, there's a chance I'll miss them. Um, I'll field those questions and I'll ask Ian them on your behalf. Um, if we open up the mics, then it'll be, it'll be mayhem because we've got a lot of people with us today and we'll get through as many of those as we can. So, without further ado, enough of my, enough of my jibber jabber, so to speak. Ian, um, are you ready? Over to you. Yes, Alan, thank you very much. I am ready. Um, I take it that you can hear me. And I, have I can, one. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, good stuff. I'm ready. Um, and um, am I able to? Yes, I am able to share my screen. Excellent. Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good wherever you are, folks. Um, thanks very much for coming along and joining. I'm really quite excited about this opportunity. Um, normally, the webinars that I run have, uh, have uh, maybe five or ten people join, but I, I, I see that we're up to well into the double digits now so we are if not more um so thank you very much for coming along i appreciate it um i am the, the ceo of a company called recruitment bot um i've been running a uh, a talent acquisition consulting agency for uh, about 18 months now under the name of people traction you might have seen some of my uh, slightly more biased one-sided views on LinkedIn the odd time and some of you certainly have joined up through the webinar through those views so thank you very much um, today we are here to talk about um, generating a continual flow of candidates towards your business um, using mar more uh, marketing techniques rather than uh, talent attraction techniques um, I've been running a, a a series of webinars learning from traditional marketers, um, learning their skills, their tactics, their tricks of the trade on how they generate large groups of buyers towards their business. And the, the kind of pitch on this is to, to, to figure out how we can transfer those skills into what recruitment people do. Um, so yeah, ask any questions as we go through. Alan will either leave me to the end or will interrupt, interrupt me on the way through, either is fine. Um, but let's get started then. So whenever we work as talent acquisition professionals in a more traditional sense, in a, in a sense of what we have been doing for years, either within our client's business or within our own business, there's three typical groups of people that we relate with. So there's employees within a business, there's a talent pool that you know of, whether that's an engaged talent pool or not, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But there's a talent pool that you know of within your ATS or within your, your, your personal social network on LinkedIn or wherever it may be. And then there's literally an ocean of talent that quite often we don't know about. We don't have engaged with what we're doing. And, and that makes it really quite awkward to actually relate to and attract and, and, and work with these people. And what that means is that typically what I see is that forces recruiters to use the most awkward and most expensive ways of attracting people. Now, to use the analogy, I've used a helicopter lifting people from the talent pool into the business. Now, what that means is for an internal recruiter, you might be forced to use agencies. You might be forced to use agencies when you don't want to and forced to pay the fees when you don't want to. For agencies, you might be forced to, uh, to invest in LinkedIn recruiter licenses. You might be forced to spend your whole day long sourcing, 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 trying to find new people um, and, and, and struggling to do so. Um, but 
I believe there's a better way for both parties to, uh, to, to work through their day to day. Um, well, the first thing that we do is we connect the ocean of other talent to the talent pool that we know of. The next thing that we do is we connect the talent pool that we know of to either our organization or the client's organization. But it's not just as simple as that. There needs to be, there needs to be motivators along the way. There needs to be action points in place for us to drive people closer to our business or closer to our client's business. And to me, the first step in, 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 the, in the, the, the pipeline here is awareness. Um, you're going to, some of you are going to start to maybe roll your eyes because you'll have seen an awful lot of talk about this recently. So generating awareness of your business, of your client's business. So if you're an internal recruiter, you want people to at very least know about your brand, know the products and services you provide. If you're an agency recruiter, you want at very least the, the talent pools that you're going after to be aware that you exist and you recruit within the market that you recruit within. The next thing you need to help them with is educating them on the careers, the roles um, and, uh, that you offer and how you can benefit them. Then helping them consider your business, either as an employer of choice or a recruitment agency of choice. And that, to me, the point that the one-to-one -one recruiter interaction really starts to take place talent acquisition, okay? So I believe that an awful lot of this pipeline should be automated, should be bought into uh, a recruitment marketing context rather than a sourcing context or rather than, um, than, than, a, than a more traditional recruitment context. So building the awareness of your brand, helping people understand what you do, helping them consider you as the one of choice to work for, and then starting that one-to-one -one interaction with the people that really matter and can actually deliver value to your business, rather than trying to interact with everybody. Or what we more often do as recruiters is interacting with very few people and leaving an awful lot of people in the dark and doing damage to our brand in doing so. So though that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. But why do we actually kind of end up doing these behaviors that, that kind of drive us to not speak to the right people or drive us to, to not speak to as many people as we should in the right way? Well, we go straight for the jugular. Um, and, and this is, I, I tried to bring an analogy out of this one, where if I go into the barbers for my monthly or six monthly haircut, um, for my, uh, my beard trim. I walk in, I speak to a barber that I know, I sit down, we have a chat, I have a coffee, I get to know and trust the guy for a start, and then I get my haircut and I get my beard trim. If you walk into a barber shop, they say hi, sit you down and stick a blade against your throat, you're not gonna trust them that much and you're gonna feel really uncomfortable with the process that's happening. And that's far too often what we do within recruitment. We serve a job in front of somebody, they apply, we take them to interview, and we offer them a job. For a life decision like a career, that is far too quick, far too little care is being taken to actually make the people want to work with us or with our clients. And it's a bit like having a blade against your throat because you only want to be put in that position if you're desperate to find new work. If you're comfortable and successful in your current career, then that's not a process that you want to put yourself through. So let's think about this in, in the buyer's context. So we talked to Gavin Bell and Alistair Lee very much about this whenever we're talking through the Facebook ads campaigns that we talked through in the, in the webinars we did with them. Um, if you don't know who Gavin Bell and Alistair Lee are, look them up on LinkedIn. They are absolutely top guys really, really knowledgeable in the funnel conversion through Facebook adverts, and you can use their marketing knowledge to deliver some serious value in your talent attraction for, for your business or for your client's business. So the buyer's journey, first of all, there's three things that, that companies know they need to do whenever they're taking people through a major life decision, like buying a car, buying a house, the sorts of decisions that are relative to changing a career. You need the person to know of your brand, they need to like your company and the stance that your company takes, and they, you need, they need to trust that your company is going to deliver a high quality service and not screw them over, essentially. 
those are the, three, the three simple steps that people need to go through whenever they're making buying decisions for things that will, will actually matter in their life. And there's a typical way that you take people through these three areas, and that's what's called the marketing funnel. We have several steps to the funnel that marketers like to talk about. They like to talk about bringing people through awareness and education, into consideration, and then into conversion. Now, the smart marketers don't try to skip the first two steps and go straight to conversion. You don't often get served a Facebook ad that tells you a price and tells you to buy now. You more often get served a Facebook or a LinkedIn ad that offers you an ebook, that offers you a white paper, that offers you to join a webinar, like Alan did for this webinar. Offers you to do many things that starts building the awareness of what you do in your brand, then into the webinar helping people consider you as the person of choice, as the company you would like to work with. And only then, once you've got that, con that, that consideration fee is cleared off, you try to convert the person. So if we think about that in a recruitment context, taking somebody through the awareness, education, consideration, and then going through the talent acquisition to convert that person into an employee, the place that a recruiter adds the value is in that conversion point, not so much in the awareness and consideration. So that's the top part of the funnel there that I believe that we can start to automate through digital marketing techniques that marketers use to take people through the same feelings and sentiments and emotional decisions whenever they're going through a major buying journey. Ian, can I ask a quick question? Yes. So if you could go back a slide, back to the awareness piece, that'd be great. So... Um, if I'm putting my agency recruiter hat on, which I must admit is, is rather dusty because I haven't worn it, for a, worn it for a number of years now. Um, yeah. Often an agency recruiter is working for, for multiple clients. And this is a question I keep getting asked all the time. Um, so building awareness for those individual clients at scale is, is quite a challenge for them. How, how would agency recruiters go about doing that? Or what should okay, they so focus on? Sure. So to me, that is building awareness, education around the fact that, well, you specialize in the area that you do. You're extremely knowledgeable in the area that you work in. You work with a number of large clients in the industry. So you essentially start to build the thought within the talent pools that you're going after, the thought that you are the conduit of a career decision. So you want the candidates to see you as the person that they go to when they're thinking about a new career and you have access into multiple different companies that they would want to work for. Does that make sense? So it's, yeah, absolutely. So it's a slightly different tack that a direct employer will take because they're talking about themselves and building awareness of themselves clearly. But ultimately, the, the approach and the, the mechanisms for doing it, which I'm sure you're going to come on to, are, are very similar. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we have a, a wee bit of a comparison of the content that a agency and a corporate recruiter would use a wee bit later on. So we'll, we'll get to that. In Perfect. Thank you. So, no worries. So let's take a very quick look at the candidate's journey whenever it comes to this. So as we said, we far too often go through job ad, person applies, we interview them, and we offer them a job. That, that, that's a very short process with very few touch points along the way for somebody to make a decision that is going to change their life, change the people that they spend most of their time with, change their salary, change the direction that their career is going. That's a huge decision with very, very few touch points along the way. To me, what we need to start doing is we not need to start looking at the pre-recruiter engagement part so that we can have people wanting to work with us as recruiters or wanting to work with our clients, the, corporate, the corporates that there are, um, before we start that job advert piece, right? So the first thing that somebody wants to know is, do I know them? Do I know their brand? Do I know what they do? Do I know what they're about? Is there career growth in the, the positions that I'm applying for? So if you're wanting to truly attract the best people in the industry, they need to know that there is growth for them in that job. I believe. Will they respect me? So is it a diverse workforce? Is there opportunity for males, females, 
for, for, for every element of society not wanting to go through them all because I'll miss one and offend somebody. Um, what do they stand for? What are the values of the organization? Do I see myself as part of that? Sorry. Um, am I a team fit? So, are, you know, so there, there is an awful lot of that. So whenever you come into thinking about team fit, it's not always just about that kind of, am I the same culture? It can be literally, is it a diverse team with diverse cultures? And so I will be a team fit. Is that the sort of team I want to work within? Then through into the, do they care for the community? Now, this is actually a big one for me. Um, my last career position that I was in, I chose because I liked the social responsibility work that the organization did. I liked the fact that whenever this organization worked in Africa, they put an awful lot of uh, effort into helping the local community. And more than anything, they took 95% of their employees for each project from that community. Where, so you actually get the feeling that they're doing good for the people where they work. And that drove me to actually really engage with their brand and want a career with them. So you can see how that actually makes an impact along the way. And, and, and probably the last one along here, but it's so, so important. Will I actually be able to offer value to the organization? If I can't offer value as somebody with career aspirations, there is no point in me working for that organization, I believe. So this is where content comes in. This is where content is king. This is where we can serve information to people along the way, allowing them to buy into our brand, buy into the idea of working for us, and start to think of an organization as the employer of choice. And then we have the job advert or the approach. Now I say approach in here because that's when we want to start approaching people. Whenever they've consumed our content, whenever they've decided that you are an employer of choice, that's when you want to have that recruiter having that conversation about where they fit into the organization. Application, interview, offer, okay? Going through that, but you can see how much effort we've actually put into the pre-recruiter side, and this is where recruitment marketing comes in. The thing that you don't want to do is put out content that doesn't matter. Put out the, the five, five reasons to choose a career in process engineering. Yawn, nobody cares. Process engineers aren't going to engage with that. It doesn't matter, right? So this is where we start to think about how we gauge our content towards the right person. So if you choose content to go towards a group of individuals in an industry, find out what they're interested in, find out what they're passionate in. The passions that lie within those people, you can, you can use those to develop your content, to deliver content that actually matters. For example, whenever I work at Wood Group, all of the content that we created was based around safety. Safety was the biggest message within the organization, oil and gas company, quite dangerous environments these people are working in at times. Safety was the most important thing. And through creating content that harped on and on and on about safety, we got people that were passionate about safety. And the people that didn't care about safety or were a bit haphazard in the workplace, walked away from our brand because of that. So this is where we talk about polarizing our content. This is where we talk about co creating content that is actually going to matter to a specific group of people that we want to attract and push away the people that we do not want to attract. Polarizing your content is a good thing, not a bad thing. Having less people engaging with your brand but having the right people engaging is the key to making your content actually matter. So, Content ideas, how does this work? First of all, so awareness stage. For an agency, this is gonna look slightly different from internal. So an agency will be creating ebooks, white papers, videos on industry trends, regulation changes, clients they're working with, about the larger industry picture. Could be salary surveys, could be stuff like this that's going to attract the attention of people around the agency as a whole. Whereas an internal corporate recruiter will be creating a different type of content. Be creating content based around their corporate brand, the products and services that brand creates and delivers. Key figure ebooks and white papers. Now, the product and service information around what you deliver might sound boring to you as a recruiter. I worked with an automotive engineering business recently who thought they were boring. 
um, thought that they had nothing exciting to offer, quite a corporate brand, quite old, mm, didn't, didn't really have a buzz around the content that they were putting out there. But after a short conversation, we found out that they manufacture the driveline and the brakes that make the fastest car in the world go and stop. Now that, to me, is pretty exciting. And to an engineer, that will be pretty exciting because you get to work on industry-leading projects. So if you can grab, as an internal recruiter, content like that, you can really start to make it matter. Education piece. So this is where some of the more job adverts start to come in. But for an agency, it could be project briefs. So, so if you're working on a project with a client, not an individual person, or an individual role, sorry. If you're working in construction engineering and you have a client that is working on the the the, the ultra fast, uh, what do you call it, the, the train project, um, or if you're working in Aberdeen, more relative to me, the, the major Aberdeen Western peripheral road that's being uh, built at the minute, 750 million pound project. If you can create a project brief around what's happening, how it's happening, when it's happening, that's information that your talent pools will want to know and will want to engage with. If you can create content with your clients, even better. If you could create testimonials, if you could create um, video interviews from some of the key figures in your clients and promote that, use it as a PR initiative for them as well, then you can get some really cracking engagement from that. And then through into things like newsletters that actually provide content that matter to your talent pool. For an internal recruiter, again, that's gonna be more about getting more location specific. So providing content to people in Aberdeen about what's going on in Aberdeen or providing content to people in London about what's happening in London. Then we get more to the consideration stage and this is where I think that we jump more into one-to-one -one engagement or group engagement. There is still content at this stage, particularly for the agency side of things, where we're, we're talking about testimonials. So testimonials would be something that would help somebody consider you as an agency recruiter of choice. Case studies on what you've delivered in the past, helping give you give your the talent pool that you're after trust that you've done it before. Um, obviously job ads to help people consider that you've got the right roles and they're, they're converting. And then one-to-one -one engagement. So that consideration piece, that's somebody actually deciding you're the best. And that takes one-to-one -one engagement. That takes calls over the phone, personal emails, that sort of stuff to actually drive that feeling. And again, for the internal side, it's going to be quite similar. You are going to have one-to-one -one engagement there, meet the open days, meet the team days, hackathon days, whatever it might be that attract the talent pool much closer to your business. And of course, representing your, your, your employer value proposition in there as well. And then the conversion piece, again, let's talk about this as one-to-one. -one. This is where us recruiters actually add value in finding and selecting the most important people that are going to drive value in our business or our clients' businesses. Having those people in conversations where we're, we're coaching them and we're having non-sales marketing conversations. Okay, So we're not trying to pitch them jobs at this conversion point because hopefully we're already representing them, but we're talking to them about things that are happening in the industry. We're coaching them through the interview process they're going to be going through and we're, we're helping them achieve their goals in their career. And that's mirrored almost over into the internal corporate recruiter side. If, if we can have more time to focus on that value added piece of conversion, both internal and agency, we can convert more employees, which for both sides is only gonna be a bonus. The next thing that we talked about whenever we're going through this, these marketing uh, uh, webinars is, is that there's, a, there's still a feeling in many underdeveloped marketing teams or in the recruitment industry that we should always be closing, we should always be selling, we should always be reaching out and offering something. So for example, that would be that every two weekly call that you make to that top candidate saying, I've just taken a brilliant role in, uh, it'd be perfect for you, can I represent you? Okay, that might, might get a positive reaction in some places, but it's not gonna gain commitment and it's not gonna gain the respect of seeing you as a person that can really help them. 
you're just a, a, a job aggregator at that stage, so you are. Um, so, so this is where we get through into the idea of an awful lot of the conversations you should be having with the highest value candidates that you're working with, with the ones that are ready to close, should just be general conversations. And some of those, well, sorry, so some of that, you, you might question that. But so if I, if I think back to whenever I was in, 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 in business studies and school, the teacher spoke to us about how they thought Coca-Cola would never need to sell, never need to advertise, never need to market again, because they were that deeply embedded in our everyday life that they didn't need to. All right? But that begs the question, why do you still see it street corners like this? Coca-Cola everywhere. And the reason is that Coca-Cola want to see, want you to see them as the brand of choice, and the next time you're thirsty, they want you to think Coca-Cola. Okay? And this is what you want to do with your brand whenever you're doing recruitment. For the people that matter to you, you want them to think, I want a new career, I want to speak to Ian. It's as simple as that. So content ideas around that. So on the agency side, how do you keep in touch with people without offering them a job? How do you keep in touch with people without really kind of uh, doing the sales piece? And this would be both candidate and client driven. So the first bit is, by phone, by email. I saw this news, thought it'd be interesting. What are your thoughts on it? That what are your thoughts on it? That open question at the end is probably the most important part of that, right? Now, if you are a recruiter that phones up your clients on a two weekly basis and says, have you got any jobs? Or something slightly softer than that, this will feel uncomfortable or the client might feel a bit strange whenever you do this for the first time. But, if you get to the fifth and sixth time that you see something that is truly interesting to them and you start having those conversations around what's happening in the industry and where the industry is going and, and, and being seen as that kind of conversational advisor on what, what, what's going on, that source of knowledge, then all of a sudden conversations that you have are going to become just natural everyday conversations rather than sales conversations. And I bet you any money the next time they think they're putting a job out there, they're thinking of you rather than the person that phones them up every two weeks and says, have you got any jobs? On the internal side, it becomes a little bit easier. So if you're phoning up a process engineer and you're able to talk about what your head of process engineering published in their blog, published in the, in the, in the magazine, in the white paper, or spoke about on stage, whatever it might be, and again, what are your thoughts? That, that becomes something that allows you to, to stay in touch with these candidates at a stage where you don't necessarily have anything to offer them. So you're moving away from the only time you're phoning these people is when you want to sell to them, to you're phoning them because you're interested in their career and what they're doing. And that seems an awful lot nicer and have an awful lot more integrity about it to me. And it works like a dream. On the information piece, so again, you know, providing content to your talent pools, and you could do this on mass. You could create a monthly outlook of what is going on in the industry, the blogs people should be following, the content they should be digesting and pushing it out to them, and not offering jobs in that email is just fine. Again, within the the, 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 the corporate side, you can start talking about things that are happening, initiatives that are going on in the business, large projects that might be coming off, and just asking, a, would you like me to keep you in the loop? Asking for that little bit of consent, that little bit of, yes, I'm interested, to keep providing information to those candidates so that they know whenever you're contacting them, it's not always about sales. In-person events are a great way to do it. So if you've got an industry event coming up, and you're able to phone your top 20, top 30 candidates and say, I'm at event X, are you? Can I get you a coffee? Nice and easy, soft, just looking to have a conversation. Really nice way to keep in touch. And again, same on the corporate side. And then the value-led side of stuff. So if you are the agency recruiter that can phone your candidates and give them a salary survey, both client and candidate side of things, are you getting paid enough or are you paying enough? That's really valuable information to both parties and you can really play on that and use that to have a conversation. And if you're sending that information, why not book a meeting with them to talk through the salary survey and in that meeting, don't pitch anything. 
walk out without pitching anything. Become that advisor that just wants to talk about interesting stuff. And then on the internal side, again, that one-to-one -one engagement, interview process, coaching, marketing conversation, all of those sorts of stuff that are very easy to have as conversations in, in the corporate world. The one thing that holds us back is that we do too much very small bits of communication with too many people. So how do we stop that? Well, one of the things that we do as a recruiter is we focus on kind of everybody. We put job adverts out to S1 Jobs is the one in Scotland, um, Reed, Monster, whatever it might be. We put jobs out to these job boards, indeed. And what happens is that we get applications from everybody. And because we get applications from everybody, we respond to very few of those people. And we damage our brand to everybody that we don't speak to. And, and it becomes really difficult to manage any of the conversations that we have just talked about. Um, that means that we end up just stuck in the normal every day of recruitment, either posting jobs to things that are becoming a wee bit boring and talent attraction, the big job boards, the, the, the stuff that just drives hundreds of applications and very few candidates, or we spend our time sourcing. And sourcing is a very, very time intensive thing. It's very valuable, but it's very time intensive. So if we can move some of our activity away from sourcing and towards inbound talent attraction, then all of a sudden we can free up that time to have one-to-one -one interactions with the people that actually matter. And that means we need to be a lot more targeted. That means that we need to put our marketing information out in front of people that actually matter. And the way that I'm going to talk about doing this today, and I'm going to share some of the campaigns that we deliver, that you can deliver yourself um, in the follow-up to this, you'll get my Facebook advertising, LinkedIn advertising, and um, preparing for Google Jobs, um, eBooks. So you'll be able to do all of this yourself. This is not a pitch. So the first thing that you can do, the very, very, very basic thing that you can do with your pay-per-click advertising using uh, both LinkedIn's ads and Facebook's ads is you can select who your ads go to. Now, do not, uh, don't mix this up with job advertising on LinkedIn. This is using LinkedIn's ad solutions to drive pay-per-click advertising. Two very different things. So within the pay-per-click advertising of both platforms, we can decide to put our adverts out to the people that matter. So the first three very basic things that you can run through is, uh, is my audience in the right location? Are they in a relevant industry? And do they have a relevant job title? And pushing the adverts out to only those people and only paying when those people click on your advert. All of a sudden, you get less applications. Funny enough, you actually get more candidates, so you spend less time not engaging with people that don't matter. You spend more time looking at CVs of people that do matter, and you end up actually spending less because you're only paying when somebody clicks, which is absolutely lovely. So that's the most basic element of pay-per-click advertising that we can do, and that's a really, really good place to get started. The next thing that we can do is we can start to get really, really smart with, with how we're dealing with our job boards and with how we're dealing with our, uh, our career sites. So with both LinkedIn and Facebook's pixels, we can put, so a pixel, first of all, is a piece of code that goes on your website that tells you who uh, the type of person that's visiting, and it gathers the, uh, that audience together into an audience on Facebook and LinkedIn that you can serve adverts to. So if you pixel everybody that lands on your site, which is pretty standard stuff to do these days, it allows you to see the number of people that start an application and complete an application. So you can start to decide that I'm going to push my advertising to people that did not convert through the application process, people that dropped off before applying. So that pixel will tell you who has dropped off. You then run them through the same targeting as before, location, industry, job title, and all of a sudden you get a group of people that you can target with your advertising that are relevant to the jobs that you're advertising and that have dropped off your application process. You can then serve relevant jobs and relevant content to them to re-engage them and help them think of you as the recruiter of choice. And all of a sudden, you're starting to deal with the awareness, 
and the education parts through advertising to the right people, only paying when they engage with you. And that is allowing you to start to spend more time on the conversion of candidates that matter to your business, that one-to-one -one engagement that we were talking about, those nice non-salesy follow-up calls, all the sorts of stuff that will provide value to the candidate, will also provide a, a wealth of information to you as a recruiter. The next thing, and this is where it gets really interesting, so if you drive your advertising to your groups of people on LinkedIn and Facebook, and then start to run what's called an attract, convert, remove process. So your advert goes out to a relevant group of people on Facebook or LinkedIn. Your week one piece of sponsored content arrives in front of them, and they click. They go through to your content, and you give them a call to action to apply or subscribe. The people that do subscribe, we use that pixel information that we were using in the last slide to understand that that person subscribed, to understand that we have converted them into contact details and somebody that we can market to in the future. So we remove them from all future advertising and we engage them through email, through phone, through chatbots, through whatever way it might be. The people that do not subscribe, you serve week two content to them. And you just run that process on an ongoing basis. So all of a sudden, the advertising spend that you're using to attract and convert people is always focused on attracting and converting new people. All of a sudden, you're only spending money in the right place and you're spending less money. You're focusing on the right people and you're having one-to-one -one engagements with the right people. So you can see how powerful this actually becomes in the long run. Add that idea into an experience funnel. Now, I've run experience funnels more so on the corporate side, but I believe they could work for the agency side as well. Where you target your top of the funnel people that are not already on your system, you drive ads to them based upon the fact that they are in the right location, the right industry, and have the right job title, giving you your relevant people to advertise to. You then serve them with a sequence of content scheduled seven days apart, whatever it might be. It could be two days, it could be one day. Depend, you're gonna, you, pr probably the best thing to think of there is testing different delays and figure out, out which works for your business. The first thing you do is serve them awareness content. This is our brand, this is what we do, this is the cool products and services we provide. Then education, this is, our, this is the people that work for us, this is what they do, this is the region that they work in that's relevant to you and this is the sort of role that you could work in. Consideration, starting to deliver the EVP, the, the, the employee testimonials, the employee interviews, videos, blogs, helping them see you as the employer of choice and then delivering them into a call to action to apply for a job. And that becomes a process that, whenever you're working through, can be very, very impactful. So, the next thing, so once you start to, mm, once you start to get this sequence right, you can say, I'm only advertising to new people, I'm only advertising to the right people, I'm running them through experience funnels, I know that, to run somebody through an experience funnel, it is taking three to four weeks through the funnel that's on this page. You can very quickly start to look at your statistics to say there's 100 people enter the funnel and there's 10 candidates come out the other side. And if you have done your workforce planning well as a corporate recruiter, or if you have done your business planning well as an agency recruiter, you will know roughly in three months time I need 10 candidates, in six months time, it looks like I'm going to need 100 candidates. And this is where it actually just becomes simple math. The number of people that go into your advertising campaigns will typically convert on a percentage or a ratio basis. 100 people in, 10 people out, something like that. You'll learn what it is for your business and you'll improve it over time through content. So you can just decide that to put 100 people into my campaign, it costs me hundred pounds. So in six months time I need to double the amount of people that are going into my campaigns or a number of candidates coming out sorry. So what I need to do over the next few months is I need to double the advertising spend to 100, 200 pounds. 
And all of a sudden, you have a business case to go back to your leaders to say, through the statistics that we can see, this is the, the, the value we get out of our advertising. We know we need to increase the number of people we recruit. And so this is the data telling us how much we should spend. And your business case has become proof rather than fiction or rather than I think this is what we need to do. So, Alan, I would like to open it back up to you. Have you any questions come through? Is there any, any questions that you have? Um, no, nothing yet, but uh, now, we've, now we know we've finished, we'll probably start seeing them flooding through. So, guys, if you've got any questions, then start to, uh, start to trickle those through for Ian. So a couple from me, and actually a comment. I loved your barber picture earlier, and I was looking at um, both your beard and mine and thinking both of us probably need to visit that barber a little more often <laughs> than six months. <laughs> um, I thought that presentation was excellent, Ian. I think the detail you've gone into there is a real eye-opener for people, just to see how they can apply those um, fairly kind of common techniques now within the world of marketing to um, the world of, of candidate attraction and, um, and how they quite simply kind of move over really and it's uh, I'm not going to say it's not rocket science because you make it sound easier easier than it is but it's very doable and, um, and I think a lot of people are thinking out, out there now how can we how can we do this ourselves how can we actually build this into our into our workflow um, is this something you can help people with if it's not something that they can do themselves Ian? Yes, absolutely. So we actively deliver pay-per-click advertising for clients at the minute. To be honest, Alan, we predominantly do it whenever we are working with clients delivering a chatbot to them. Um, we, that, that's the, the area that we're really focused in. Um, but if anybody needs a, a coaching session, if they need a uh, need a one-to-one -one or a, a bit of help in, in either developing their first campaign or putting a business <laughs> their business owners on why they should do this then just reach out to me i'm always always free to have a, a, a half hour chat perfect so i've got a couple of questions then so um julie's asked where is the best place to collect content okay um so collect content there's any number of ways of collecting content i'm i, I don't want to be uh to, to palm this one off um, or anything, but have a look at Ben Glad Hill's um, Employer Branding DIY Toolkit. Uh, you'll find it on his published LinkedIn post. It's got a whole load of stuff there that is really valuable. Um, a few tools that you can use to create or to receive content that you can consider using to put out to people would be to use a tool called Feedly, um, F-E-E-D dot L-Y aggregates RSS feeds of popular blogs, popular news sources. You can use a search to start delivering the right sources to you, and then you can see that content. Now, most often, the content that a corporate recruiter uses will be corporate content about themselves. Most often, a content that an agency recruiter uses will be content that is more uh, industry high level. So you can even go on to uh, Google, go to the news, type in your industry, pick the couple of top news articles that are there, open them, maybe open five tabs of the same article, read through the different opinion and viewpoints that are being bought by the reporters, and then write a quick blog summarizing the content yourself and distribute that out to your followers and all of a sudden you've got a really really easy way of creating content that will actually matter to people and uh, helen's helen's asked um what she's kind of said and then asked um she's a solo recruiter so has no budget i'm assuming probably more like a very limited budget and um, yep. what tips would you recommend um to helen for gaining gaining more likes on facebook and i guess therefore more exposure yeah, that, that's going to become more and more and more difficult with the, the, the changes that Facebook are making to their algorithms. So Facebook are changing the way they serve content to us and they're focusing more on friends and family and less on business interactions. They are telling us that is because they want it to be a place of meaningful interactions between people that know each other. The reality is what it means is that businesses need to pay to play. Um, so yep. you're going to, it's going to be less likely that you get your content in front of people without paying. 
On the other hand, if you can create content that people are actively commenting on and liking, then all of a sudden you start to be able to have those personal interactions happening and it's going to be more likely than in the past that you are going to get seen. So Helen, I don't know if you saw the post I put out in LinkedIn uh, on Monday that has eaten up most of my week replying to people where I promoted this webinar and offered three what I believe are insanely high valuable pieces of content as a reward for joining us on this webinar. Well, just transfer that approach into your business. Can you create a salary survey and have people comment to get that survey or have people interact with the posts on your page to gain value from you, thus creating engagement and viral spread of your, of, of your content? Perfect. Right, we are, we've just overrun ever so slightly and I'm a bit of a stickler for finishing on time to allow people to go and do whatever it is they, they need to do with the rest of the day. We've had a couple more questions flooding in, but what I'll do is we'll, we'll pick those up offline and, um, and send those answers out as part of the follow-up. Yeah, okay, cool. Perfect. So listen, thank you very much for your time, Ian, really appreciate it. Thank you everybody who's joined us and um, hopefully you've learned a lot through this session. I'll be following up in the next 24 hours or so with all of the content that Ian's spoken about, recording of this, this webinar and uh, anything else that we think might be useful for you guys. So once again, thank you very much for joining us and I hope you can join our next webinar in a, in a week's time. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye.